What is up guys, it's Ryguy McFly tuning in here and we are talking about Legion's Realms at War once again. This time we're talking about the watch list. Uh, we're going to get right into it here. I appreciate you guys tuning in and sit back and relax, like and subscribe and uh, let's, let's start talking about it. So what is the watch list? The watch list are cards that Future Lore Studios has essentially said, we are watching these. They potentially could affect the gameplay in a significant way, and we'd like to let the players know instead of them investing or seeing the market jump on something that could potentially be banned or altered in the future. So commendation to Future Lore, because with Konami, I invest in a $100 Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer or a Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, <coughs> and here we are seeing that card being reprinted and valued at about $12.99. So to see not only cards be put on the watch list or potentially affect the game, maybe being should have been put on a ban list in Konami's sake, they are reprinting it to death so that everybody has access to it. So I really do appreciate Future Lore for saying, hey, look, we're going to be watching these cards. They potentially could affect the gameplay. Uh, we know that cards like the Veil Pierce cards, which I'm going to get into in a minute, uh, they, may, they may not be reprinted. Uh, that we may not see battle deck reprints. And with that, there's, there's already a limited printing of those battle decks, which means that potentially new players might have a hard time accessing those sorts of cards. So it's really nice to know that um, the company's got our best interest in Moving on, we're going to talk about the Veil Pierce cards. So the Veil Pierce cards are actually cards that, uh, as previously mentioned, these are reprinted or these are printed in the battle decks. They have not seen a reprint, and I honestly would not put my money that they will see one. Uh, these are cards that allow you to pay 10 Bloodborne to either pierce your veil early or for free to pierce your veil again. So not only do you get a significant amount of advantage just running one copy of this, but certainly you get a lot of advantage running multiple copies, being able to access that Veil Pierce first turn, and to be able to get significant advantage. Not only do you get access to your Synergy, but then your Warlord can attack, it can special ability uh, based on its cooldown, you can use your Synergy based on its cooldown, as well as your Guardian. So it gives you immediate access to three or four resource, uh, resources that your opponent just won't have. So uh, it's very nice to know that these cards are put first thing on the list that potentially these things could be watched. Now, um, not all Veil Pierces, I would argue, are the same. There's a Veil Pierce like um, the Orc Veil Pierce, which gives plus two to your board, which in an Orc deck is super beneficial. Them being able to access their Synergy, Guardian, and Warlord in uh, a turn earlier or several turns earlier allows them to push for a game in a significant way. A deck like Dwarves, however, has an ability that says pay 10 with the Veil Pierce, uh, Pierce the Veil, target two cards on the field and return them to the owner's hand. Which means that if that card goes through and your opponent doesn't have a response with their Fortifieds, that you can return their Fortifieds to hand without a response. So it's a very powerful card uh, in all cases, but certain Legions have uh, benefits more than others just by paying that 10 or being able to pierce you know, on the second turn or whatever. We're going to talk about Salvage the Pieces, Burn the Bodies. Now this is a card that's actually uh, out of the Orc battle deck from the original Alpha set released almost a year ago. This deck is, um, or this, this deck's very basic. The card was not really used in the Ravage Lands meta and now that Frontiers has been released there's cards and combos from the Ravage Land sets, and even with the Frontiers cards, that make this card exceptionally powerful. So for an example, Salvage the Pieces, Burn the Body says, pay Bloodborne 4, target 3 cards that were sent to the discard this turn, um, add them to your hand, and destroy one card you control. So if you are potentially adding back uh, a Warrior with Retrieve, or some other resource to allow you to um, get back the uh, Revival Ooze, be able to get back your Pride of the Orc Bane, to get back your Desolation Outpost, you can definitely see how these extenders, being able to discard and draw and 
you know, put more guys in the band, be able to reuse your revival ooze, and be able to use that multiple times so that you've got more orc warriors in your discard to power up boars. You've got uh, better options for war torn wasteland now, uh, and even cards like um, ivory sabers allowing you to dump five things. Uh, when you activate it, this gives you access to so many more options with Salvage the Pieces Burn the Bodies. So it's a very good card and deserves its place on the watch list. Next we're going to talk about Pits of the Outer Rim. Now this card, I myself have been guilty of playing it. It's a very nice card with orcs to be able to push for game. At the end of your opponent's turn, you can activate this card, mill six cards, and be able to pop four cards on their side of the field. Generally, you'd wait for them to end their war phase, you activate the card, you pop their four fortifieds, and then on your turn you have one fortified to worry about to push through while you're trying to go for game. And certainly in the event your opponent's played something like Welcome to Alverdon, whatever, it is just a great advantage to be able to not have to worry about their play lines while you're pushing through. Now the reason this card is on the watch list is certainly being able to pop four fortifieds on your turn as an orc player, it's very uh, you know, it feels bad for anybody playing against it, having one fortified, only one option to try to stop them. And certainly with the dismantle in hand, uh, they've got game if they've been able to do that. So the consistency with cards like Pits of the Outer Rim is unmatched. Now, like I said before, Ivory Sabers, uh, Hide of the Huntress, allowing you to send cards from your deck to the discard that turn actually procs and allows you to use salvage the pieces burn the body so if you happen to send a pits of the outer rim while doing this you can now add those to hand set them to your side of the field and you're in a very good position to destroy your opponent next turn so they have nothing on board so it's a very consistent piece and certainly if they can't stop it they don't have much that they can do in way of uh, preventing you from finishing them Next we're going to talk about Return of the Prime Warriors. Now this card I have some contention for because it is a once per turn and it does have a limit for saying your DCM, your damage counter max has to be 45. Uh, you have to have 45 damage on board out of 80 and certainly there, there are enough limitations for that card to make it not necessarily as worrisome. Now that being said, the card allows you in a deck where you can eradicate your whole deck after almost killing yourself and then being able to heal for up to 60 cards potentially if you're running, you know, uh, or up to 59 cards potentially if you're running a pure 60 card Titan deck is very powerful, allowing to heal back to 23 from 60 and having a bunch of retaliate guys on board, having a bunch of fortified set and, you know, there's really not much your opponent can do once you've got a nice board set up, you've healed yourself, uh, maybe you are under a welcome or a mist, and there, there's, there's no option for them to be able to push for a game. And so, while it's not as worrisome as some of the other cards you'll see on this list, it is something that I, I can see why it's on this list. Next we're going to talk about Primordial Release from Shackles. Now this is a card that was released in Ravaged Lands, like most of these cards, and this card says, pay Bloodborne 8, revive, I believe, a Primordial Titan Warrior from your Eradication Zone. Um, if this card is eradicated, eradicate the top four cards of your deck face up. So neither of these effects are once per turn. Now the first effect is not as worrisome because it does have a Bloodborne 8 cost to revive a warrior. Um, it is the eradicate this card, eradicate the top four cards of your deck. And this card not being limited to one, allows you to combine it with some other combo pieces, being able to add it back to hand, eradicate it again in the turn, and comboing off of Return of the Primordials, this can um, very easily get a, out of control in a pure Titan deck where you've eradicated most of your cards, you've added them back to hand, you eradicate four more cards, and it just helps with the engine and makes it almost a little too consistent. And so I can see why this is on the watch list. Maybe it'll be put to a once per turn. Maybe it'll be put to a, a one in your deck. So certainly um, I can see why this card's on there. It's not as, as worrisome, but certainly I can, I can see why. Next, we're gonna talk about a card that was originally printed in the Demon Battle deck. That would be Volox Documents of the Dam. And it was re recently reprinted in Frontiers. 
The reason it, I think it was reprinted in Frontiers is because the access for this card was needed for new players coming in to give demons the consistency they need to stay current. However, Volox along with Serena Sada and End of Days has become almost a, a, a dread for most people coming to a, a large scale tournament or playing against a, a demon player in general. If they win that first die roll, you start with no cards in hand uh, because they can use their first mulligan, look for Volox Documents of the Dam, and if they don't get it in that first 12 cards, they can look for the next six cards for a Volox Documents of the Dam or an end of days. Um, once they get Volox, they can pay, I believe it's four, discard two demon cards, search for a demon card, uh, a demon unify. So you can search for end of days. And that allows you then to, well, you can also search for the Veil of Ears, but you can search for end of days, play it, destroy all cards your opponent controls, they discard their hand, and then we, everybody draws two, uh, everybody discards their hand and you draw two cards. So if you set your whole hand, activate end of days, draw two more cards, you are at an advantage because You've just gotten those two cards back. You discarded off Volox. Your opponent has no cards in hand, and then they are relying on that first draw to hopefully allow them to extend a little bit further and allow them to continue playing. If they are playing a casual deck, and certainly they'll have the consistency. Um, I was playing as a hero player, drew into an armament after that happened to me, and there's really nothing you can do because if you don't draw into a warrior, you don't draw into a piece that allows you to draw, you certainly cannot uh, recover quickly enough to be able to stop a demon player after they first turn uh, end of days. So that's why this card's on the watch list. I can certainly maybe see this one go into a one um, just to help with consistency. I don't really see it being ratted because uh, it's not a once per turn issue. Uh, you can errat it from the discard and it's, it's not a matter of not having access to it, but certainly it's, it's just something to consider. Next we're going to talk about another card I have some mixed opinions on being on the watch list, and that would be Grim Wish for more life. Now in a deck like Undead, with only 65 health, Grim Wish for more life is almost a necessary piece to allow them to almost die, heal themselves back, but still be able to mill cards off their deck and to continue with that engine. Currently, with Whispers of the Grim being at a once per turn errata after Frontiers, as well as Camellia's Grim Cry of Death, they really don't have a unified card that can continually allow them to mill cards outside of um, you know, some new warriors that Grim Shambler allows you to mill. Um, but the consistency pieces that are needed, um, Grim, Grim, Grim Wish for More Life, while being almost too consistent, um, does allow them to have that extra little piece to allow them to keep up with that engine. And so certainly that's why I feel um, I feel some mixed feelings about it being on this list and certainly um, you know having played them having watched them use across the soul river sticks place that uh, grim wish for more life back on the bottom of their deck and being able to uh, you know search for it later or be able to uh, you know uh, plunder into it later on and play it again continually um, you can see how these loops get a little bit ridiculous where they're just infinitely uh, looping and healing themselves back down to zero. And that can be a bad uh, first experience for uh, a new player, somebody who's coming into the game playing an undead player and them finding out this loop and certainly um, having three copies of this card, or, um, you know, having this in existence, it's needed, uh, but maybe not at a three. Next card we're gonna talk about is Secret Savannah. Now this is a brand new addition to the watch list here. I believe it was just added last night. And this card, um, it's one of my favorites. It's a Ravage Land Common. It allows you to pop a warrior on the field, search for a bounty realm fortified. Now, not only does this allow you to get a lot of consistency when activating parish effects, but it also allows you to have consistency when all, always being able to get, say, your bounty realm exalteds to get your de uh, deflex or to get your miss of the bottom Morgana. And that consistency alone makes this card very dangerous. And certainly uh, any card made that's a bounty realm fortified will have to be looked at next to Secret Savannah, just in the sense that this card always allows you to search for it. 
no matter what, no matter what uh, card you're looking at here. Now we're gonna talk about my favorite card on the list, and I definitely don't feel targeted, would be Welcome to Alberton. Uh, Welcome to Alberton was a card that was listed in my one of my previous videos, uh, link in the description, and that video um, I talked about why you should buy Battle of the Harvest and why it's such a good set. Certainly one of my favorite pieces in Battle of the Harvest is Welcome to Alberton. It, it's paired very well with Viviana and this card allows you to fog during your turn. The reason this is a bit of a toxic card is because if there's only five responses allowed to potentially negate your opponent's activation of this card, then uh, being able to reshuffle this back in, being able to play it continuously, your opponent can't push for game, it can be a very toxic card in the same way that I talked about that I love the card. So I don't feel targeted. I don't feel targeted. This card can be toxic for the game needs to be watched and may be limited or removed from the game because of how splashable it is. An aggro deck can draw into their, uh, you know, be forced to go first. Uh, it's a glass cannon deck. They don't have anything that they can do and they can play one welcome and pass turn. And certainly they can continue to do that until they have the opportunity to push for game when there's no miss, when they have all the deflects uh, or the dismantles in hand and they can make sure that they don't have your opponent doesn't have any responses so certainly in the same way that pits is toxic and orcs to prevent you from being able to have any responses when your opponent is trying to go for game welcome to alberton is very similar for all decks because if i play it and you don't have a, a deflect then it's just going to extend the game endlessly and so this is why uh, for a game health I respect why they got it. And that's the watch list. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching here. I know this one was a bit of a shorter video. I wanted to discuss some of my opinions on the watch list as well. Why, is, uh, why some of the cards were on there and some of the combos. So certainly if you guys have any questions about these combo pieces, how you can achieve some of these loops, or, or, or certainly if you have any other cards you think should be on the watch list, please let me know in the uh, comments below. And I'd love to ha maybe have an open discussion or talk about cards that should be on this list. Because I know uh, I was personally thinking that Secret Savannah should, should have been on this list maybe uh, a few weeks ago. And it's just very cool to see how uh, Future Lore is responding to the community's feedback and how that ends up uh, affecting the, the player base. And certainly if, if the, the card is not as toxic in other areas or it's not something that we're seeing um you know played outside of you know me and the couple people i play with that maybe it's not going to be uh limited at all so um it's, it's it's very cool to see that um so thank you guys for watching i very much appreciate uh, you tuning in uh, please like and subscribe. It really does so much for the channel and for me to want to continue um, Putting out this sort of content this you know, it's a bit of work to to make these sorts of videos and scripting and uh, Lighting and videography, right? So I really appreciate you uh, Liking and subscribing take care and thanks for watching